On Sunday 11th of December, the uncrewed Artemis test run around the moon ended with spectacular triumph when NASA's Orion spacecraft splashed down in the Pacific Ocean near the Baja California coast. And already we're eager to know what's next. This splashdown closed out the 25 and a half day mission to test out all the hardware and software for NASA's new mega moon rocket, the Space Launch System or SLS. Their capsule to carry astronauts beyond low Earth orbit called Orion and the service module provided by the European Space Agency which supplies power and propulsion to Orion. And given that we've had a lot of concerns about this ridiculously complex system on its maiden flight, we really shouldn't have. This is NASA, and NASA have shown once again that they don't f**k about. So that's the test flight. What's next? Now before we get started, I have to admit I'm feeling a bit ropey this week, so my voice might give out a bit, and I'm genuinely dead behind the eyes. So if you have any suggestions for feeling vaguely human when you've got the lurgy, please do put them in the comments below. Anyway, enough self-pity from me, on with the show. 2017 was when this Artemis 1 test flight was originally supposed to fly. Engineering delays, a couple of recessions and a pandemic saw that date fly on by like a Russian lander. But without the ability to blow a load of prototype test vehicles up along the way, the public don't like to see NASA vehicles explode, they had to test test and keep on testing until they were sure all the systems would work and then launch as soon as they were ready. Four attempts in summer were aborted, but on the 16th of November everyone held their breath and just hoped it wouldn't blow up in the night sky. And if you're watching on a laptop you can see how that spectacularly successful launch and flight went right here. Artemis 2 was originally scheduled to launch with the first human crew in 2021. Yes, that 2021, the year that expired last December. And how cool is this? When it was first proposed, Exploration Mission 2, as it was called back then, was going to rendezvous with an asteroid previously placed in lunar orbit by the robotic asteroid redirect mission and once captured in a giant bag, have astronauts perform spacewalks on the asteroid to gather samples. At that time, that sounded too fantastical, but in reality it was just too expensive. NASA wants to push the frontiers of technology and learn more about the solar system at the same time, and Exploration Mission 2 would certainly have done that, but by 2017 the asteroid redirect mission was dead, and NASA's human spaceflight activities were consolidated into trying to get to the Moon by 2024 under the renamed Project Artemis. Don't ask if that timeline's still on schedule. I'll keep you on tenterhooks and come back to you later in the show. But spoiler, it isn't. But with fantastical asteroid visiting missions scrapped, NASA could focus on getting the already delayed rocket and crew capsule up and working. Artemis proved that this month, and we're now ready to see what Artemis 2 brings. And the plan for Artemis 2 is still a 10-day mission to loop around the moon on a slow free return trajectory with four human crew members, three from the US and one from the Canadian Space Agency. However, none of these have yet been selected, so that's one of the jobs that needs to be done before Artemis 2 can launch. The director of NASA's Johnson Space Flight Center said this week that that should be early 2023. And did you see the launch tower? Now, NASA didn't want photographers snapping the damage that 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust caused to their sparkly new launch complex initially. The tower took a hell of a pounding from the ferocity of the rocket engines and the air pressure as oxygen was sucked in at near supersonic speeds to feed the flames exiting the engines and the outpouring of air as well as just this ferocious inferno enveloped the whole tower. That now all needs to be repaired, tested and upgraded for Artemis 2. An emergency evacuation system wasn't needed for Artemis 1, but it will for Artemis 2 that has a crew. Analysis of Artemis 1's key science goals also need to be done, namely radiation doses to the mannequins that were packed with radiation sensors, because long durations outside the Earth's protective magnetic field 
needs to be understood to be sure the astronauts on Artemis 2 are sufficiently shielded by the Orion capsule from the high energy radiation in deep space. We understand solar storms a lot better than we did in the days of Apollo, but we still can't predict when a solar storm will happen, only the direction it's traveling in and how long it will take to get there. But when a solar storm does happen, this really ups the ante on the already hostile space radiation environment. And then there's the analysis of all the hardware, software and space flight systems from Artemis 1. Did everything work okay? Was anything suboptimal? What lessons were learned that would make Artemis 2 safer? There were quite a few hardware and software experiments on board like voice activated control that could be dropped or optimized before Artemis 2, but those experiments are far less important than analyzing the data from the necessary systems that must all be checked out and signed off or upgraded. Oxygen tanks and other life support systems also need to be added to the Orion capsule and service module. These weren't needed for Artemis 1 as they were only test dummies for radiation exposure experiments and a couple of soft toys to try and get kids excited about the mission. So the necessary life support systems will take some time to integrate and test out. NASA will reuse the avionics boxes from Artemis 1 for Artemis 2. These avionics and electrical systems provide the nervous system of the different launch vehicles and spacecraft linking all the diverse systems into a functioning single spacecraft. Of course, that all now has to be recovered from the singed and soggy Orion capsule that plopped down in the Pacific a few days ago. It has to be tested for performance and fatigue and then be integrated and tested again. Oh, camera's a bit close, I'm feeling too rough for a close up. Back away. And it all sounds like a lot of testing, is that all really necessary? Isn't all that testing what makes NASA so slow and cumbersome and how Elon Musk and SpaceX move so fast? No, it's absolutely necessary. The uncrewed Artemis 1 had to be tested to within an inch of its life because a kablooey could have undermined confidence in the whole Artemis program leading to its cancellation. A kablooey on Artemis 2 is absolutely unthinkable with a human crew on board. SpaceX developed its Crew Dragon capsule in a pretty rapid time, but that was still an upgrade to the uncrewed Dragon cargo capsule, and it still needed to go through testing to NASA standards to get the assurance and accreditation to fly with astronauts on board. Testing is slow and laborious, but it's unavoidable. So, for the exciting Artemis II launch around the Moon with a crew, 2024 it is. Or it probably is. Some rumblings are suggesting it might still slip to the first quarter of 2025, which would likely push Artemis 3, the mission to put footprints back on the moon, to 2026 or even 2027. But while we're all impatient to see Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 fly, there is no room for error anymore. These are crewed missions and safety is the absolute priority. Seeing the Earth set and Earthrise images during Artemis 1 made me feel like a kid watching the early Apollo missions in the 1960s. But the uncrewed test flights are now over, and even the most cynical of us have to admit that this Artemis adventure is getting mighty exciting. Next stop, humans around the Moon. The stop after that, humans on the Moon. And don't forget, this is the flight hardware that NASA wants to use to get beyond the Moon to put the first human footprints on Mars next decade. And if you want to know all about the risks that humans face in long duration spaceflight, you're really going to want to check out these videos because this is what NASA's facing now. They're back in the big time. Oh, I think I'm gonna die.